In topic 1.5, we are going to talk about separating compounds and mixtures. So we're going to talk about six topics, um, filtration, distillation, evaporation, chromatography, decanting or pouring out, as well as separating elements in a compound. So the first five are physical separations of mixtures. And the last one is the chemical separation of a compound back into elements. So let's look at physical separation of mixtures first. I have pictures that you need to draw and write the descriptions. We will uh, do some of them uh, in the lab where you will be separating mixtures using the four different methods. Filtration. So you have a funnel a filter paper or a membrane and then you are going to filter a liquid and a solid mixture in a beaker like this you're going to pour it in and then uh, the membrane is going to capture the solids and then the liquid which has smaller particles will go through the holes or pores of the membrane and it will go back down as a filtrate Filtrate is the substance that remains after you filter the solid. So the solid part that remains will be called the retentate because it's retained inside. So remember filtrate and retentate. So an example that you do at home would be filtering coffee. Coffee filter works exactly like this or filtering pasta using a colander. Next up is distillation. If you recall, I showed you this uh, part of the distillation apparatus. It's called a condenser because it condenses a gas into a liquid. So distillation, you must remember, is a way of separating homogeneous or homogeneous compounds mixed together in a liquid. So a homogeneous substance. So say... Uh, you want to mix, uh, separate a mixture of um, some type of alcohol and water. You can always mix alcohol in water. We call it diluting alcohol in water or an acid in water or what have you. Um, this is done based on the boiling points of the individual components. So the substance with the lowest boiling point will evaporate fast sooner than the one with the highest boiling point. The way you do this is you're going to um, first uh, figure out um, ch in, heat the uh, flask to the boiling point of the lowest uh, boiling point substance and keep the temperature stable until all of it has evaporated. So say we have an alcohol and petroleum mixture they're all diluted in each other. The alcohol will evaporate first, say at 60 centigrade. So you keep the temperature stable at 60 centigrade. And then all the alcohol will evaporate and go through here and come down here. You're sending cool water and the co warmed up cool water that absorbed the heat from the gas particles remember in the previous lesson we learned that gas has the highest kinetic energy that means they move around that's why they're not together because they move around they have high energy so the water will absorb their high kinetic energy and cool them down causing them to combine into droplets or condense and then they will come out from this end and this is called the distillate so you will purify or isolate each um, substance in the um, homogeneous mixture like this. It could have two or ten different substances. You keep the heat stable at the boiling point of each one, starting from the lowest boiling point to the highest boiling point, until you have separated everything else. This is all, always done in chemistry. Um, so the boiling point, remember, depend, depends on the pressure and the temperature where you have this um, setup. 
next up is very easy evaporation this is how salt is made using um, seawater there are big salt farms where they have little um, so sand tanks they just make little dams out of sand square areas and they trap salt water and let them evaporate in the hot uh, heat of the sun and all you have left is salt um, so here's the evaporating dish that we um, discussed in the lab equipment lesson and you're going to heat it on a stand like this by the Bunsen burner until all the water has evaporated and then voila you have just your salt powder remaining so it's a very simple way to do it and finally we are going to talk about so this is a um, solid remains and this uh, solvent is evaporated you get a crystal like or crystalline substance finally we're going to talk about chromatography so i'm going to explain this carefully this is used to separate a mixture of solids or gases dissolved in a solvent the solvent is called the mobile phase there are fancy versions of this called a gas and liquid chromatography that is used in chemistry and biochemistry to identify com compounds in a mixture now this is something an analytical chemist would do right based on the differ different mobilities uh, speed of movement of individual particles in a mixture okay so um, we are going to use um, you are going to put a um, stationary mobile face which is a solvent this is your solvent it could be alcohol a type of oil or water depends on the solubility of the substance some things dissolve in water right and others don't so if it's an oily substance you will use an oil if it's something that dissolves in alcohol you will use alcohol so in this case say you have a permanent marker you're going to take a filter paper like this and put a dot of permanent marker ink say you got the black one i promise you it's made out of several different colors and all of those are soluble in some type of alcohol say we used acetone the nail polish remover so then your solvent mobile face will be acetone and you dip it in here and the the filter paper will wick the mobile face and it will start traveling as it starts traveling the uh, components in this pig uh, dye or pigment will separate like this into different colors they all have different speeds at which they um, dissolve in this mobile phase so the one that is most soluble that likes this um, solvent the most will travel fastest because it will move much quicker this would be the least soluble thing it's moving the slowest does that make sense if you couldn't understand pause rewind that section and go over it so separating a mixture of solids or gases dissolved in a solvent that's what you use this for examples of this uh, could be separating colors in a black sharpie pen dna sequencing um, if you're in uh, biochemistry you will do sds page which is a way of separating proteins by their size and speed of migration or um, DNA um, separating DNA fragments on an agarose gel and so on. I have not discussed a decanting over there because we all know decanting is just pouring something, right? So say you have um, number five, you have a solution of well a mixture of marbles and water in a glass you can just pour the water into another glass and separate the marbles and the water right so i don't need to explain that to you second topic major topic is chemical separation of compounds this is a irreversible 
reaction your when you make compounds from an, a bunch of elements or an element it is combining them in chemical bonds to one substance a compound this is the reverse you're breaking them down back into the elements this is re irreversible so um, examples of this is if you put um, this is a way of making hydrogen fuel cells very cheaply but it's hard to do um, hydrogen gas can be made out of water you put two electrodes a cathode and an anode and an electrical circuit and then um, you can get hydrogen gas h2 gas and o2 gases um, in the two separate electrodes and you can collect them um, another one is extraction of phosphorus for um, fertilizer for example using mineral compounds in nature another one is um, we can do this in the lab let's we will do it um, you take sucrose or table sugar which is carbon hydrogen and oxygen in this formula you can separate get rid of the hydrogen and the oxygen in the form of water they just evaporate out and you can have pure carbon so your sugar will turn pure back to do this you add concentrated some kind of a concentrated acid which will hydrolyze break down the sugar into water and all you have remaining is carbon these are only a few examples there's a lot more other ways